This video is sponsored by Audible. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible Originals. The 2009 Class, a class that included stars like Eddie Lacy, Alshon Jeffrey, Denard Robinson, and Vontez Perfect. All of these guys were ranked in the ESPN 150, but none of these four were in the top 10. In this video, I will briefly look at each of the top 10 recruits from 2009, go over if they lived up to the expectations at the collegiate level, and see how far their careers in football went. So let's get into it with number 10. Although he played quarterback his senior year, Ruben Randall was considered the best wide receiver in high school football. That's because the combination of his size, speed, and ability to catch the ball reminded scouts of AJ Green and Julio Jones. Randall would eventually commit to LSU. Jefferson deep in the right corner, man is open. It's caught, touchdown, Ruben Randall number two. Despite a few big games, his first two years were underwhelming. However, things finally had to come to fruition during his junior season. Randall's speed helped him routinely burn corners on deep routes, and he was nearly impossible to cover on jump balls. He was never as good as Julio Jones or AJ Green in college, but after leading LSU in receiving yards and touchdowns in 2011, pro scouts had given Randall a possible late first round grade. And Mike Mayock has him ranked as his 63rd best player in the draft, and he's picked in the 63 slot in the draft. So how did his pro career go? Even though the future had looked bright, things fizzled out rather quickly. Despite putting up decent stats during his rookie contract, he was labeled as lazy, disinterested, and distracted. The Giants decided to let him walk once his contract was up. He received another opportunity with the Eagles, but Ruben Randall's problems, which seemed to be based on his work ethic, became apparent when he was cut after only one preseason game. The dude was out of football completely by 27. If you couldn't tell, Jelani Jenkins was a beast of a running back. He ran for 22 touchdowns his senior year, but here's the thing, he wasn't being recruited to play running back. He was one of the highest ranked linebackers in the country. Jelani's pure size, combined with his relentless tenacity, would have been incredible to witness in person. After his high school dominance was up, he committed to Florida. He managed to earn the starting gig at middle linebacker as a redshirt freshman. Then by the end of that season, he was voted to the 2010 freshman All-American team by SEC coaches. However, his production did decline over the next two years. According to his NFL scouting profile, one of the biggest knocks on him was he struggled to get off blocks. Also, the nagging injuries didn't help either. His last season at Florida ended in foot surgery. Despite concerns about his health and decline in production, his athleticism still held up to NFL standards. So Jelani decided not to risk another injury and entered the NFL draft. He was selected in the fourth round by the Miami Dolphins. Jelani was thrust into the spotlight following an injury to the starter. He would surprise many, leading the team in tackles in 2014. This had turned into a feel-good story, but it didn't last. His production wouldn't hold up long enough to get him a second contract with the Dolphins. After brief stints with the Raiders and Bills, he would sign with the Houston Texans mid-season primarily as a backup. 2017 was his last year in the league. That's still pretty solid considering the injuries that he sustained sustained while in college. Bryce Brown was a monster running back who dominated Kansas high school football. Bryce and his older brother Arthur had become the first brothers ever to both be five-star recruits. Sadly, Bryce's story is a rather disappointing one. He got involved with a shady dude who charged universities a fee for updates on how Bryce was doing. Then that same guy told the press that Bryce was considering joining the CFL instead of college, which Bryce denied. Eventually, Bryce would go on to Tennessee where he became frustrated with the lack of playing time, transferred to Kansas State to play with his brother, then left the team altogether after carrying the ball only three times. The story goes that after being pulled for missing a block, Bryce had been skipping team activities, then a week later was found all the way across the country back in Tennessee with his girlfriend. That marked the end of his college career. This dude legitimately had the talent of a first round pick, but he seemingly threw it all away. Here's the ridiculous part. He was still drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Sure, it was a seventh round pick, but the fact that he was still selected after barely playing college football is shocking. Bryce would actually have more success in the pros than in college. However, it was short lived. Bryce would last in Philly for a total of two seasons before sitting elsewhere for two years. He was out of the league completely by the end of 2015. Flemlo made a video a while back going more into depth about this dude's career. It's worth a watch. 
LSU commit Craig Lawson possessed a similar frame to Ruben Randall, tall, athletic, and great ball skills. The difference was this dude played on the defensive side of the ball, listed as the best safety in high school in 2009. Looking at the sheer size of this dude, you could see the potential was there. By his junior season, it had all come together when Craig played well enough to earn all SEC honors. For the 2012 and 2013 season, he played a role on the back line of the defense and statistically performed well. He played fast and fearless. A good comparison would be Taylor Mays if you remember that guy. Despite multiple scouting reports projecting him well to the next level, Craig Lawson went undrafted in 2014. He lacked NFL quickness, gave up separation to receivers, and tended to be over aggressive. But what was more critical was he had failed a medical checkup during the draft process, causing many teams to remove him completely from their board. He would sign as an undrafted free agent with Jacksonville where he bounced on and off the active roster for two seasons. He played sparingly mostly on special teams, and never started a game. He was out of the league by the end of 2015. I'm sure none of you have forgotten this man. Trent Richardson was a 220 pound bowling ball when he was in high school. Then he went to Alabama and got involved in their training program. Even among some of the biggest and strongest college football players, Trent Richardson had become known as the freak. As the backup to Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram, he still managed to rush for 750 yards and eight touchdowns. Mark Ingram set a few school records when he won the Heisman, just to have Richardson break those the following year. His junior season was jaw dropping. He made SEC defenders look like fools time and time again. Not only did he live up to expectations at Alabama, but Trent Richardson is a college football legend and one of the best running backs of the entire decade. With the third pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Trent Richardson. You all know how his NFL career went. He only lasted three forgettable years, then bounced around the CFL, the AAF, and was even used as Bama's scout team running backs so their defense could prepare for Leonard Fournette. Even with the XFL coming in 2020, Trent Richardson is simply not good enough to play at that level. In his prime, he possessed a ridiculous skill set, but just lacked the ability in other areas. Jacoby McDaniel was the highest ranked interior defensive lineman on the ESPN 150. At the same time, he was a pretty good baseball player as well. He got drafted out of high school by the Milwaukee Brewers in the 33rd round as a third baseman, but he decided to focus on football and accept a scholarship to go play at Florida State. His time with the Seminoles was pretty underwhelming. Although he made an impact here and there, Jacoby never really dominated. He also got hit with the injury bug, which got him a medical redshirt, and he did manage to help Florida State win a national title in 2013. Following that, he would go undrafted, only managing to appear in one game as a member of the Cleveland Browns in 2014. He eventually attempted to play some arena football in Cleveland, but by 2017, he retired from pro football altogether. Coming out of Alabama, Drake Kirkpatrick was a lockdown corner. He had 17 interceptions in 35 high school games, and he went on to play in the 2009 U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Alongside Trent Richardson, he committed to Alabama. This was back when Bama's dynasty was just getting rolling. Drake Kirkpatrick became a cornerstone of the Crimson Tide secondary. <laughs> His level of play received high praise from NFL scouts. It was enough to get him selected in the first round by the Cincinnati Bengals. His pro career got off to a slow start. It took him four seasons to become a full-time starter, but his production has always been there. Not a dominant player, but he is still in the league. He's the only player so far on this list that can say that. Russell Shepard was the best mobile quarterback in high school football. They listed him as an athlete, but his intentions were to play quarterback at the next level. His athleticism was being compared to Florida's Percy Harvin, but as a quarterback, USC even said that they would use him as a Reggie Bush type player in their offense. Russell eventually committed to LSU where he believed he would get the best chance to play quarterback, but things didn't turn out that way. LSU was not going to switch up their style of football, one that didn't fit Russell's skill set at quarterback. Instead of transferring, he was a team player and switched first to running back, then receiver. His production by the time he was done was certainly lackluster. He had become an afterthought in the LSU offense. Although he had underperformed at the collegiate level, he still looked the part. 
His high school reputation was enough for him to get a shot at the pros. He signed with the Eagles in 2013 as an undrafted free agent. Although he was waived, Russell would go on to Tampa Bay and become a critical part of their special teams, eventually even being named captain of the unit in 2015. By 2016, he had officially become a part of their offense. He would find a similar role on both the Panthers and the Giants, one that saw him as a third or fourth receiver on the depth chart. And currently, he's still on the Giants roster. It's wild to think that he had gone from one of the nation's most sought after recruits to an underperforming disappointment in college, then to grinding his butt off to get onto an NFL roster and still make millions. What a beast. Coming out of Hawaii, Manti Teo had become the most sought after linebacker in America. He was the highest ranked defensive prospect in 2009, and his transition to Notre Dame didn't disappoint. As the leader of the Notre Dame defense, they were dominant during his senior year. They only gave up 10.3 points per game. The Fighting Irish were so good that year, they made it to the national championship, something this team hadn't done in nearly 25 years. Even though Manti had earned about every accolade you could get as a linebacker, he found a way to top that. The dude was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. If you know anything about that award, linebackers are almost never nominated for it. It's primarily an offensive award, so the fact that Manti was even in the running is incredible. Although they got blown out in the national title, Manti still projected well to the next level, but his college career career would instantly become overshadowed with one of the more bizarre stories you'll ever hear. Half injury. Teo, despite his grief after the loss of his girlfriend and maternal grandmother, 12 tackles against the Spartans last week. During Manti's senior year, his grandmother and girlfriend both died on the same day. This had become a major storyline in college football since Notre Dame had rallied around this dude and they went on that magical run to the national title until it all went haywire. In January of 2013, it was reported that Manti's girlfriend didn't die of leukemia. In fact, she had never existed. Manti had been catfished for years by some dude. The whole Manti Teo to hoax could not get more bizarre. Now the guy behind the catfishing scam is actually recreating the voice he says he used to enrapture Teo for months. Here's the original voicemail. Hey babe, I'm just calling to say goodnight. I love you. And here's to Wes Sopo's version. Hey babe, um, I'm just calling to say goodnight and I love you. If you want to know more about the full story, Flemlo also made a video about this a few years back, going into detail about the whole thing. Anyways, Teo was drafted in the second round by the San Diego Chargers. His NFL career has been plagued by injuries, and he's never been really a star player, just sort of a rotational guy, first with the Chargers, then with the Saints through the end of last year. After being a free agent for most of 2019, he's now back with the Saints, and he does have a real girlfriend now, so good for him. Our final player, the number one recruit of 2009, was Matt Barkley. Barkley was the golden boy of high school football. He had become the first freshman quarterback to start for the esteemed Matter Day High School since Todd Marinovich. By his sophomore season, he was calling his own plays. When Barkley was a junior, he was a national star, achieving Gatorade National Player of the Year. QB coach Steve Clarkson described him as a cross between Joe Montana and Tom Brady. He committed to USC, the school that had become a popular choice for star quarterbacks from Matter Day. He would start for the Trojans right away. It took him about a year before things started clicking, and by his junior season, he really started to shine. He set the USC record for completions, yards, and touchdowns in a game. He would end the season with the all-time Pac-12 record 39 touchdowns and place sixth in the Heisman Trophy race. After speculation was that he would declare for the draft, he announced his return to USC by giving head coach Lane Kiffin a homemade ornament that said, one more year. Entering his senior season, season as the Heisman favorite, USC ranked number one in the preseason polls, and being projected as high as number one for the 2013 NFL Draft, this is how people had pictured it when he came out of high school. But the season ended in disappointing fashion. USC lost five games, and Barkley's season ended in a shoulder injury. After not throwing at the combine, his draft stock dropped tremendously. He would fall all the way to the fourth round, being selected by the Philadelphia Eagles. Barkley would struggle to even find playing time. When he did, it went badly. It wasn't until his fourth year in the league that he even got a chance to start a game. In a sequence of seven games, it didn't go well. Still, Barkley is currently in the NFL as a backup to Josh Allen in Buffalo. The top 10 recruits from 2009 were a mixed bag, but the fact that most of them got a shot in the NFL shows just how talented they were. Looking towards the future, it'll be interesting to see where upcoming recruits will end up in 10 years. Um, we have our contracts with uh, all the people we do. Evans breaking tackles, breaks another. There you go, baby. 40, 30, 20, 10, 
five. Touchdown. Hand off left. Look at the burst from Zachary Evans. Still going. Zachary Evans inside the five. Touchdown, Touchdown. North Shore. So I wanted to give a shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible keeps you informed, inspired, and entertained. Plus, it's super convenient with the Audible app. You can listen at the gym, in the car, traveling. Anytime you can't read, you can listen with Audible. A good audiobook that I'm interested in is simply titled Belichick, The Making of the Greatest Football Coach of All Time. From an award-winning author, this audiobook circles around Belichick to tell his full story for the first time and presents an incisive portrait of the mastermind at work. You can start listening today with a 30-day trial, which allows you to choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash KTO or text KTO to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash KTO or text KTO to 500-500. Thanks for watching.